Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about defects and or injuries in leopard geckos, what they look like, how they originated, that sort of thing. As you know, I keep a lot of leopard geckos. I have 31 of them and a lot of those geckos are pet only or special needs or rescued and so they have a lot of the defects and or injuries that I'm going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to leave a list of timestamps in the description that way you can jump around the video in case you only care about one or two of these things because there are quite a few of them. So first we're going to start with missing toes. Now a gecko can be missing toes for a lot of reasons and this could extend to beyond the toes like it could be missing multiple toes, it could be missing its foot. But the reason that a gecko would be missing its toes is because they could have been bitten off. So if you have geckos that are cohabbed or if like you got the gecko from a store and it was cohabbed with other geckos it's possible that one gecko bit the other one and its toe was ripped off. It's possible that the geckos lost their toes due to stuck shed. So when stuck shed builds up on the toes, it restricts the blood flow and that toe becomes necrotic and dies and then eventually falls off. Although if you don't remove the shed, this just builds up further and further and can spread to the foot or other toes. And this can also happen with tail tips, but we'll get there in a minute. Another reason that the gecko could be missing toes is it could have just been born with less toes. I have a gecko named Jamie, who's an African fat toe gecko, and he was born without his whole fourth foot. So, I mean, it's very possible that they could have just been born without toes. Now, beyond toes, they could be missing feet or limbs. And again, this could be because of stuck shed, although that is much more rare. Typically, it's just toes or toe tips that you see. But there was a gecko that I saw when I went to NARBC Tinley Park in 2016. There was a booth with a couple women who were sharing the different exotics that they had seen at that vet clinic they work at and i was looking through the, the binder and one of the ones that they had seen was a leopard gecko who had such severe stuck shed that it had to have two legs amputated which is extreme so like i mentioned they could also have a missing or deformed tail tip typically the leopard gecko tail tip should taper off to a fine point sometimes if it's rounded it's because it has been bitten off or it has had stuck shed and then the tail tip became necrotic and fell off that could make it rounded and sometimes geckos are born with a rounded tail tip and this is like a disfigurement but really it's nothing serious also they may have dropped part of their tail and that can result in like a tiny bit of regrowth that can make the end look nubbish i want to distinguish a tail deformity from a regrown tail a regrown tail doesn't have the same texture or appearance or markings as a original tail but a regrown tail is not a defect this is something that they do in in nature to ward off you know predators they drop their tail it wriggles on the ground the predator goes after the tail and the gecko says see ya and gets away it, they're meant to drop their tails so that is not a defect or i mean it is an injury because it has to heal but it's not the same as if the tail were to become infected because of stuck shed for example geckos can also incur injury to their tail they can get burns and the tail burns very easily because it's really fatty so the tail can burn uh, if you don't like have a thermostat with your under tank heater or if your heating from above is too hot. So eye and eyelid deformities is like a whole section on its own. And I have a video about eye defects in leopard geckos already, which I'll include up here. But in short, it can happen from stuck shed, it can happen from injury, it can happen from infection, it can happen from birth defects. I mean, there's tons of ways that a leopard gecko's eyes can be impacted, so make sure you watch that video. Now, jaw defects can come in a few forms. They could have an underbite, which is where the lower jaw protrudes outwards or they can have an overbite which is where the upper jaw protrudes outwards instead of meeting nice like this they go like this or like this this is fairly common in leopard geckos though like the more extreme cases such as bench and you don't see super often now underbites and overbites are like exclusively caused during birth or during development in the egg they're not something that typically happen as like a result of injury. However, a gecko's jaw can become misshapen and floppy from metabolic bone disease and that can cause it to look different or not perform the way a jaw should perform. Another defect or injury that a gecko can have is a spinal kink or a spinal deformity. It's basically where 
the spine it just doesn't look normal and has like a bump in it or multiple bumps or it comes out at an angle and there's a lot of different reasons why a lever gecko spine could look like this so you can have a spine that protrudes so it's like quite visible outside the body of the gecko An example of this would be my gecko merlin but this is typically a birth defect or it can be caused by like severe malnourishment where you can see the spine but you'll also see the malnourishment so then you'll know that that's the cause there can also be a kink in the spine where it comes out an angle and bends that is typically from MVD or a birth defect now when a gecko gets an injury like that I can't imagine the gecko like surviving it's back being broken so suddenly it is possible however it is much more likely to be metabolic bone disease which is a softening of the spine and then it becomes curved or bumped then there's also birth defect which you'll notice right from the get-go but you'll notice right away that it has a spinal deformity whereas like with metabolic bone disease that happens over time leopard geckos can also have nostril deformities and this is most commonly seen where the nostril doesn't form all the way into a circle and it opens up into the mouth this is called a cleft. You see this in all different kinds of species, but with leopard geckos, I haven't seen it too often, but it definitely is out there. My gecko Rego has double cleft nostrils, so both of his open up towards his mouth and are not formed as like perfect circles. That is 100% a birth defect. Injury does not cause a cleft. Another type of nostril problem would be a nasal plug, which is basically where a buildup of shed accumulates in the nostril and then makes it like swollen and sometimes it can become infected and the only way to solve that would be to take your gecko to the vet or to do this yourself which i don't recommend and to have the shed removed from the nostril another defect or injury that can occur on leopard geckos are scars their skin can scar just like any other living creatures and their scars appear pink or white and are quite different looking from their natural texture and their natural coloration. Scars can occur from burns, they can occur from injury, they can occur from really severe stuck shed. I don't want scars to be confused with paradox spots because some geckos will have like a random change of coloring or pattern due to a paradox spot, which is just something that occurs from birth and is completely fine. I don't want a scar to be confused with a paradox spot so just keep that in mind so some leopard geckos can have limbs that are bent or crooked or misshapen a lot of times this comes down to metabolic bone disease which is a calcium deficiency and the bones soften so the bones become misshapen and then therefore the legs become misshapen but this also can occur from a birth defect now if this happens like overnight it's possible that there's a break in your gecko's leg definitely not something i've seen like very common so make sure that if your gecko was one day normal looking and then the next day its leg is misshapen or bent that you take them to the vet. The thing with metabolic bone disease is that you're gonna notice that like in your gecko. So you have a healthy gecko and then one day it starts having like different bumps and grooves and its legs are soft or its spine is kinked. Like it didn't start out that way. Whereas with a gecko who was born that way, it starts out that way. And that's how you can tell if it was a birth defect or an injury or metabolic bone disease. If a gecko's abdomen is bulging, it can mean a lot of different things. A bulging abdomen can be indication of obesity. A bulging abdomen can be indication of ovulation or egg production. A bulging abdomen could be internal bleeding. It could be impaction. It could be internal tumor. It could be fluid retention. It could be all kinds of things. Typically, if you see a bulging in the abdomen of your gecko, you're going to want to take them to the vet fairly quickly. It's not common that like their abdomen will be bulging from birth, like that as a birth effect. But again, you would know if your gecko has always had a little bit of a bulgy abdomen, then that's normal for them, you know? But if it just starts to happen, vet trip, go. So liver geckos can have an array of head or facial defects as well. The head could be sunken, the head could be arrow shaped, the head could be flat, the head could be like bumpy. Like there could be an internal tumor in the head that is causing the head to be wider or bumpier. I've seen internal abscesses and tumors push on the facial structures of geckos and changing their face shape entirely. This could be around the eyes, the ears, the top of the head, the jaw. So if your gecko's face shape changes, take them to the vet. If your gecko's face shape has always been off, like for example, Benjen has a flat head, Merlin has an arrow-shaped head, like 
that's just how they are. They've always been that way. If your gecko's head suddenly starts to look sunken, that is a sign of illness, dehydration. You definitely want to consult a vet. Another defect or injury that can be seen in leopard geckos is extra skin and wrinkly skin. In some cases, this is dehydration or weight loss. Like if your gecko has not always had like wrinkly skin, but now it does, that's probably weight loss or dehydration. But wrinkly skin is a birth effect that's fairly common. And a lot of times when you see like an eye defect or a facial defect or a tail tip defect, they will also have wrinkly skin. And it's usually on the front half of the body rather than the back half. It'll be like on their neck or their chest or their arms. And it's just like extra skin. And it's not dangerous or anything, but it's definitely noticeable. So what causes a lot of the birth effects that I talked about? Birth effects are typically caused by incubation fluctuation. So when the leopard geckos are in the eggs and they're in the incubator, the temperature fluctuates and that causes a shift in their development. This is not something that I personally have experience with because I'm not a breeder, but a lot of my geckos have defects from incubation fluctuation. It also could come down to poor genetic history. It could come down to morph. It could come down to a lot of things. If for whatever reason your gecko is having health problems, stuck shed, it's burned, it has injuries, it has metabolic bone disease, any of the things I mentioned, please seek out a vet. Your husbandry needs to be changed and you need to get medical attention for your animal. If this is not something that you're capable of, please relinquish the gecko to a rescue or a vet or someone that can get it proper care. An animal deserves to have a good life. It deserves to have respect as a living creature. And so if any of these things are something that you've noticed and you are not financially and emotionally, physically, what have you, capable of fixing this problem, then please rehome the gecko. Now, if you happen to rescue a gecko and it has any of the aforementioned traits and you're not sure whether they come from a situation of like oh this gecko was poorly cared for or oh this gecko was born this way most of the time it's going to be poorly cared for because incubation fluctuation birth effects they're not like super normal they're not rare but they're not the norm whereas like seeing geckos with metabolic bone disease is unfortunately quite normal or seeing geckos with stuck shed or like missing body parts from stuck shed is unfortunately quite normal but those are all of the defects and injuries that I've come up with. I'm sure I've missed some, so if I did, please leave them down below. That way people who watch this video can read what you have to say as well. Let me know your thoughts and let me know if you like this video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the notification bell, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!